Hey guys, I'm building the leather back piece for this breastplate you see here. Uh, it was made by a friend and I'll be quite closely following that same friend's pattern for the back piece. I've gone ahead and cut it and I'm not sure if you can see. I have kind of gently etched into the uh, surface the pattern of what I want to be tooling into it. Since it's for a musketeer's thing, uh, I decided to do what my friend had done and go with the fleur because it makes sense. So all I did for that was just kind of lightly draw a pencil across the top without really drawing the pencil lead in, but just enough to push it in and leave a mark. I have made the leather wet. I sponged it with water until it was kind of wet to the touch. Uh, I might have made it a bit too wet, I'm not too sure, but it's kind of enough that I can touch it and it feels really wet. And it kind of seems soaked through, but not so much that the water kind of starts to come out when I press on it. So hopefully that's right. This is less of a tutorial and more of a, hey, watch me try something that I've never tried before. So I have my swivel knife and the idea is to cut along these lines. I'm probably going to be terrible at it because I haven't really had much practice. So I'll do it slowly. Hopefully it works out. I also attempted to sharpen this so also hopefully that worked out because I think having a sharp swivel knife is a good thing. The idea with this is theoretically to kind of push down the edges to make it look quite smooth and nice. Can I do it? I'm not sure. Will I attempt it? Heck yeah! That will have to do for a first round of tooling. This is what it looks like. It's coming together but clearly I'll need to do a little bit more before I'm completely happy with it. Well, welcome back to probably what is one of my most disorganised setups yet. As you can tell, I now just have the floor because I am currently mid-move and my table is at the other place. However, I only have about three to four days to finish this, so I'm going to keep on cracking on. Unfortunately, I haven't really had the chance to film as much as I'd like of the creating process. What I have so far is this. I've kind of hooked it together with a bit of uh, just normal sewing thread, which might not be the best for the leather, but so that will go through like that connect here and currently what I need to work on is the little bits that come over the shoulders and and go through here. So the little bit that I have up on my thing at the moment is going to be the bit that connects to the belt um, buckle type thing and then I'll make another strap that comes down from this bit. And it will kind of essentially be like this, but for the top bit. So that's the plan. Uh, with whack camera angles and all sorts of stuff like that, because... Yay for no workstation! <laughs> I'll probably end up with a workstation later on in the video when I'm just finishing things up. But I'd kind of like to have these finished as soon as possible, because now it is Monday and these need to be done by the end of the week, preferably before, which is why I say three to four days. Anyway, let's get into it. I've been using this tool to go around the edges like this, which is hilarious because it is pretty clearly a changed screwdriver that now does the job just as well as 
a tool that had been made specifically for that. I finished tooling this but kind of added a few details here. I would have liked to have filmed that but unfortunately didn't really get the chance. Uh, I probably won't do any tooling for the rest of these bits just simply because I want to get it done as fast as I can uh, and it's kind of not really something that's essential to the piece. It would be nice, it would add a good touch if I had time but since I don't have time I won't fret it too much. I figured out it was roughly 10 inches from the tip of this to where on the breastplate it connects uh, over my shoulder. So this one over here is going to come to about 6 inches. I'm going to make uh, 4 inches and then a little bit to post through the belt buckle uh, for coming over the shoulder. This is probably not the way I'd recommend doing it, it is probably making everyone who wants to be exact cry because I'm just sort of throwing together measurements and going, yeah, it's about right. That's kind of how I work, I probably wouldn't recommend it for people who don't like to work that way. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend it in general. Not the straightest lines I know that I'll be cutting, however, it's just another thing that people can cry about while they watch me. Just tried it on for fit, it seems to fit really well. I haven't attached the other side, but I don't really need to as long as I know that this will work. That's all I need to know. So the next step would be to take off all the little janky little bits of string that I used to try it on and spread it all out somewhere and put the die on it. Make sure that I've got everything how I want it in terms of the tooling, the cutting, um, so probably checking the little cuts that I've made in the leather uh, here for the belts, well not really belt but you know the buckle. So I'm thinking of cutting a little bit out just so that all the other little bits of leather that post in there and whatnot can fit in really easily, but that shouldn't be too difficult. This is the final part, the dyeing. I have already kind of pre-practiced on this piece to see if I can kind of get a consistent dye job. I think I did okay, I, it could be more consistent, but I don't think that anybody will really notice. So I'm going to start with the big one, I will kind of have to figure out how it goes in the grooves and if that's going to be a problem, but I don't imagine it's going to be anything I can't fix. Uh, I have heard that circular motions are good for this sort of thing. The dye colour that I'm using is Western Tan, which I got because it has a lot of potential for the future, for future works that I'm doing, and also because, I don't know, brown just seemed like a nice colour to go for hasn't really got a hugely deep meaning. I will be going over this with, I believe it said Resoline, uh, a kind of sealer. And then after the first coat of Resoline, 
I will put down some antiquing paste which should bring out the carving lines and it should kind of darken up a few of the areas uh, that could stand out. After that's dry then I'll be putting on another layer of resiline just to kind of finish waterproofing it to, to keep all the colour in. I would probably recommend wearing gloves for the actual dyeing part, but I'm not. Uh, I figure it should come out, I don't know, three, four days, maybe more. I'm also going to dye the sides for a bit more of an even finish, and then once I've let the tops dry for a bit, I'll dye the backs. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. Unfortunately I didn't get the chance to film a lot of it because I was quite rushed for time and in the middle of a move while I was doing it. But I did do a coat of resoline and then a coat of antiquing and another coat of resoline like I said I would and left it to dry before putting all the rivets in place. And then after the rivets it was pretty much done and ready to go. As with the band guns I saved the film with this last bit until after I'd actually used it because it just avoids a lot of the rushing confusion. So here it is and here's the back, hopefully that is in focus. And that's it. I now have a nice breastplate that I can wear with straps. So that's cool. Hopefully I'll get to reuse this. I might have to make some different straps for different themes since the fleur de lis is very French. Uh, but I'll come to that when I come to that. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you next time. Bye.